Hi everybody, Kiwi John here. So in this video I just wanted to show you how to make your own um, alcoholic spirits. Now, in this country it's not illegal um, to, to do this process. It is however illegal to sell the alcohol that you make. So obviously that's not going to happen. Um, I might do this for my own use only. And if I'm having a party on a Saturday night, invite a few friends over for a drink, something like that. But it does not get sold. So anyway, um, you're going to need a bit of equipment to do this. And the first thing we need is a brewing barrel, which is this one here. So you will see this is 27, 28 litres. It also has a thermometer on it and a tap, which of course I've made sure that the tap is switched off. So, okay, from there we need a kit. So in this kit we have one packet of dextrose, which is about a kilo's worth. We have three kilos, sorry, three bags of two kilos. Um, and this is called turbo sugar so it's like a refined sugar and it does have you will see when I open it up it does have black specks in it now the black specks are nothing to worry about it's just carbon for purifying so we have three of those in the kit we also have this one here which is uh, a turbo clear this is for once the spirit has been made and a, a week down the track so we'll pop that to one side so the other thing we have in the kit is we have an easy filter and this is a cartridge filter and again that doesn't get used until the end of the process so that can go to one side as well so the other thing we have in there is we have turbo yeast now this one is a really good um, a really good yeast it's really fast and it works really well um, so that doesn't get used right now but we'll show you how to use that in a minute so anyway what I'm going to do is go and open up these packets um, and get ready to, to brew. We also have a lid for the um, for the barrel. We have this contraption here, which is called an airlock, and we'll show you how to use that a bit later on. You also need a pair of scissors or a knife to open your packets. You also need a holy spoon for stirring. You're going to need about 27 liters of water. So. I've actually measured this out um, and in bottles. This is because uh, here in Napier, in my hometown, I don't particularly like the water. Um, it has chlorine in it and I don't like it. Um, we have a chlorine free tap elsewhere in the house, so I do fill containers of water up and I use them accordingly. And you're also going to need a kettle to boil the water. You need a spoon to stir it and a big jug. I'm using a Pyrex jug that's uh, about two liters. And I'll just get set up and then I'll be right back. Okay, so here I am again. And we've now opened all the packets. They're all ready to go. And down here in the Pyrex jug, I have got the um, turbo sugar. So I'm just gonna show you you can see the little black specks that are in it. It is just carbon, so you don't have to worry about it. And that's just part of the purification. Okay, so the jug's boiled. All we're going to do is tip a couple of litres of water into there. Remembering, of course, not to burn yourself. And we want to give that a good stir around. You can see it bubbling away, that's fine. We want to make sure that all of this is stirred in before we put it into the brew. Okay, so as you can see that's starting to clear up, that's fine. Okay, so it looks quite black and quite a mess, but trust me, it comes out fine. So now we go over here, pour it straight into our barrel. We tip some cold water in with it. Okay. Okay, so this process takes quite a while. Obviously it's going to take five minutes in between 
each time to boil the kettle so we're looking at about 40 minutes give or take um, so I'm not going to bore you to tears with the whole process so. okay so we nearly finished that process the last bag to go in this is the dextrose so you can see this one it's more of a refined a powdered sugar um, I guess in our country we would probably call it like icing sugar um, I suppose in America you would call it um, confectioner's sugar but it's a more refined sugar and it just gives it a smoother taste okay so as you can see I've changed over to the chest cam um, because I need two hands to do this and another hand to film and I wanted to give you a close-up view of what this looks like so at the moment this just looks like a barrel of black ick but don't worry because in three or four days time this will be lovely alcohol and all that black will sit on the bottom so now we've got the turbo yeast we've got our holy spoon and there's a bit of a knack to this one we need to get a bit of a whirlpool going here we want the powder to be dissolved in the yeast powder to be dissolved into the liquid so you can see it just sitting on top there okay so that's nice so I'm just tapping my finger down here like this just a little tiny bit at a time and it does take a little while to do but we don't want it to bead if it does it's no big deal but we try not to so you can see I've got a few little beads in there at the moment but we'll show you how to get rid of those so the idea is that we just spread it across the top and then it's not going to form beads but it's not actually working terribly well for me this time sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but I'll show you how to get rid of the beads because the beads mean that the yeast is not being absorbed into the liquid so of course if you know the process alcohol is made from sugar and yeast so we've obviously we just put seven kilos of sugar in add the yeast and let it do its stuff it's a chemical reaction and away we go so you can see there's quite a bit sitting on the surface at the moment that's okay just get that stir going a little bit faster trying to keep it even across the surface of the water okay and that's the last of the yeast so now this is where we really want to get going so do a couple of back stirs that'll help to break up those few little beads there are a couple of little beads in there but well there's a few but Now you can see pretty much all of the beads now have dissipated there's a few a half a dozen or so a dozen maybe you can just use the back of the spoon and push them up against the side and that'll just break them up but a good vigorous stir across the surface and a good vigorous stir so as you can see that it's already gone from a brown to a, uh, sorry from a black to a real dark gray that's a good sign that's exactly what we want that means that the carbon is doing its stuff okay so that's about it the yeast all stirred in as you can see there's no well there's two little um, beads on the top there but that's pretty good So now we want the lid and the lid needs to be on fairly firm a nice little seal all the way around and as you can see there is a hole in the top that is for your airlock because as the alcohol is made it will give off gas and the gas has got to go somewhere otherwise your barrel is going to explode but we don't want other things to come back in contaminants like bugs or you know anything else to come back into the alcohol then so we use an airlock so it's like a one-way system so you can see here the little airlock 
and it has various little chambers and we have a glass of water here and I'm just going to pour some of it in so you can see this chamber here is empty all the way up here we've got a half full chamber here half full here half full here so the gas is going to come back up out of the barrel into this push its way past the water and escape out the top but there is nothing can come in from this way past the water back into our brew so that just goes into the top there like that and we're done okay so here is the barrel all set up now you'll see this black unit that it's sitting on this is actually an electric heating pad that I have and that just plugs in up here on the wall next to the dryer um, this time of the year I'm not going to need it but it's a good practice to remember to get into putting it on top of your heating pad so that if you do need it you can use it now you won't be able to see on there it's a colored thing but at the moment it's sitting at 36 degrees so that's a bit hot but that's because of all the hot water and everything that I put in now as this reacts and the gas starts to come off um, it will get warm all by itself but this is all set up ready to go now so in probably eight hours time it will start to bubble and I'll come back and I'll show you that then but everything else is all set up ready to go and we're done for now so here we are again and it's three days on from the last part so as you can see the temperature is now right down at 26 degrees and the airlock has stopped working and she stopped bubbling so what we're going to do is lift the lid off and we're going to use this little contraption here called a beer and wine hydrometer and you can see it has some um, gauges on there 990 what we want is for the hydrometer to sit above the yellow mark and then it's ready to bottle so all we do is hold it over and drop it in you see it's bobbing up and down there and just let it settle down you'll also notice that the color of the wash has changed from the black to pretty much a milky white which is really good now you won't be able to see on here I don't think because it doesn't zoom down far enough but that's sitting on 990 which is absolutely perfect so we're now going to go on to the next step which is putting in the turbo clear which is this one we showed you the other day so we need to um, separate this down and I'm going to need two hands so I'll swap the camera over to the chest cam okay so all we have to do for a starter is separate part A from part B it's quite simple cut down through there put that one to one side get this one ready now the important part here is that we need to stop this from gassing so you won't be able to see but it is actually still bubbling very very slightly so we want to give it a very 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 good stir up now you'll see there's a foam coming up on the top that's good that's getting rid of all of the gases so you can see it's really starting to foam up now that's good it's getting rid of the excess gas you can hear it hissing that's the bubbles coming up okay so the next part is quite simply just to snip the top off of that and just pour it straight in and that's it then we give it another really good stir now again you'll notice that the color has changed and it's gone a little bit more dirtier for want of better words darker and that is because I've stirred up all the sediment off the bottom which is all the impurities and what's left of the sugar and the carbon and all that sort of stuff but again it's no cause for concern because we'll show you what happens this time tomorrow so that's all we need to do for now and then in exactly one hour 
we will come back and we'll finish this process you have to put part two in an hour later okay so this is a relatively easy part take the lid off pour in part B and we just want a nice gentle swirl and that's it and we'll come back again in 24 hours time and we will be ready to start brewing good morning everybody so here we are it's day four of the brewing process and I thought I might just show you how the rest of it is done so obviously our brew's been going for a while it's all stopped we did all the other stuff yesterday so now the important thing is lift the lid off and it's really important now not to disturb this because there is a whole lot of sediment sitting on the bottom you can't see it but it's right there um, if you disturb the barrel now move the barrel you're going to stir it all up and it will cloud all your brew so as you can see we've gone from that horrible black through various stages and now we're getting pretty clear so this stainless steel drum here is the bottom part of the pot still it has an electrical outlet on it there so all we're going to do is just put it underneath the tap and turn it on and that's all we have to do right well we're nearly at the bottom of the barrel and I'll show you right down inside so you can see it just taken there the last thing we want to do is stir this up right now but anyway that's about enough out of there so just to show you when you stir that up look that's not something we want to drink <laughs> so anyway we shall take the last of this in So you can see I've now got the pot still set up on the, uh, it's a piece of granite, it's a, you know, a granite um, cutting board because it'll hold the heat and this gets very hot. So you can also see on here there are two ridges, okay the bottom ridge is your minimum, your top ridge is your maximum. So as you can see at the moment down inside there we need to go a little bit more and I'm just going to take that halfway through that top ridge and that's that okay so this is the top part of the still so the, the boiling chamber down the bottom here comes up the liquid comes up turns to steam and we have cold water running through from this gizmo here which goes out the, the window to my tap which I'll take you outside in a second and this one here is going to go around the back out of my way and down the drain now this water that's running through isn't actually going to come in contact with the brew this is only for cooling purposes only so it comes up turns to steam this this um, chamber here has the water running through it makes it cool turns the steam back into a liquid it'll go down the spiral and come out this tube so put that on top right so we've got the securing ring on the top there all we've got to do is now plug that in and it's 10 to 10 in the morning so we're looking at uh, an hour and 40 minutes before that is ready to boil so in the meantime I've got a couple of other little things that I need to do one of them is I'll take you outside So we have just an ordinary garden outlet hopefully you'll be able to see down on here there are two black marks on my tap so what we need to do is plug the tap in plug the other end into the rubber bung
and you'll see down about there and that is one litre per minute so I prime the whole system get it running and um, then once it's done I just shut that off so now it's all ready to rock when I'm ready so one last process all right so we have a replacement carbon filter so as you can see it's just a black cartridge and it's all um, made up of just straight carbon but as you can see there's quite a bit of dust and stuff comes out of it so all right so this is the filter inline filter so take the top off it there's a screw down here get rid of the old filter put the new one in So we just make sure that's reasonably tight. Put that back on now. We just need to run the tap a bit. Get some hot water and just warm the end of the hose up. That should be about right. And just put that onto the end of the tap. So outside we go. So I've just got it set up on my bench there, running down into the bottom barrel with the hole in it. We just chuck some water in there. Again, this is my filtered water. I don't use the chlorinated water for any, process, any part of this process except the cooling of the still because it doesn't come in contact with the stuff I'm going to drink. Okay, and all it is, again, just a case of turning the tap on, letting the system run. And this is just water, and the idea of this is we're just cleaning out the, the carbon filter. So you can see how fast that's running, it's doing quite well. We'll just leave that as it is to pour through and then we'll chuck all of that away. So I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see this or not. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. So at the moment it's at about 33 degrees. So we're just going to keep an eye on that and roughly an hour and 40 minutes time it'll start bubbling. Alright, so we're at about the 1 hour and 25 minute mark and you can see that this condensation is starting to form in the tube now with the odd drip and the temperature is getting up to, what are we at now, just not quite 50 but it is climbing quite steadily so it's gone from, I think it was about 36 degrees when we put it into about 50 now so it won't take long and then this will start and take off and we need to get the cooling water through to turn the steam back into condensed um, alcohol. Just let it get a little bit hotter. There we go, and the, the still starting to run. So there we go, dripping is getting faster, turning into a stream, 
which is really good. We're at almost 75 degrees. Time to go and put the water on. Just turned it a little bit past that for a starter. Up through the window, make sure everything's going okay. And just turn it back a bit. You won't be able to see, but the cooling water is running through here. This bit here gets very hot, and this bit here stays quite cold. So the temperature is maintained at about 73 degrees. As it, the longer it boils, the hotter it'll get. Um, and we just have to keep adjusting the water accordingly. This actually slowed down a little bit, but that's okay. Alright, so the stool settled down now. It's at about 77 degrees. And it's running away nicely. Now, this is one of the most important stages. So I'm going to put this warning on now. Okay, this is really, really important. Okay, this bit here, the first 100 mils isn't alcohol it's methanol it is dangerous if you drink it or you put it into your brew it can kill you and it can kill other people it can at the very least it can make you very very sick so don't take the risk throw this stuff out it's crap you don't want to drink it now we're into the proper alcohol and everything is fine okay so I'm gonna sit here and watch this for the next couple of hours and we'll let that dribble away and all together it should make about three and a half liters um, so that's going to take probably three or four hours and we'll show you where we go from here next okay so we're an hour down the track and I have the first liter of the alcohol made now we need to check the percentage and to know how to make it drinkable so this time we're using a different hydrometer from the last one that I showed you and this one is just as a percentage of the liquid to alcohol so uh, commercial alcohol is usually about 37 percent things like a devil's cut or a double oak or something like that is usually around 40 42 I find that the stronger the alcohol content the more undrinkable it becomes so I try and keep mine at about 37% I have in the past made some pretty strong brews and basically um, yes it's fine it gets you drunk if that's what you want to do but I prefer to be able to have a few drinks and an enjoyable time so we put the distillate into the beaker at about that level drop that in and we'll see what level of alcohol we are at and this is actually surprisingly low it's at about 86 percent so normally my brews are a lot higher than that so I'm not quite sure what went wrong there but um, anyway that's okay so 86 percent if we've got one litre And we put in one liter of water we're going to be down to 43 percent so we need obviously more than one That should be at about 43% if we give it another half a litre. 
give it about 300 mils that's it. And we'll just test that again. And that's sitting at and it turns around just below 40% about 49% so we want just a little tiny bit more in there another 100 mils actually we'll make it 200 last check Tip that back in there. It was still about the same. So anyway, I'm going to leave it like that until after I have run it through the um, filter because the carbon filter will take us another percent out of it. So we'll look at this again once it's been through that filter. Okay, so I'll go and do that now, and this will just carry on, and once we've done the three and a half litres, we're done. Hi everybody, so this is the last part of the brewing process. So, this is a full barrel now of all of the brew that we made, which is about, I think there's about seven or eight litres in there, and there's nothing to it. I've already checked as we went through with the hydrometer and the beaker, and I've checked the um, volume of alcohol and it's a 37% so I'm happy with that. So now it's just a case of filling up your bottle. Which again is no real big deal. We don't fill it all the way up just now. Leave it sort of about three quarters of the way so this is the um, essence this one's an, a classic American bourbon so we need to separate those out just the same as we did with the other mixes earlier on being careful not to cut from one side into the other And you'll see as that pours down into it, it's just going to make it go a nice amber colour. We just rinse that out just with a little bit of alcohol. Grab the lid for that. And there we have 1.125 mil bottle of classic American bourbon ready to drink. So I'm going to do just that because it's a nice hot day and I've been brewing for ages. So I don't know about you but I like plenty of ice in my drinks. Good splash of bourbon over ice, some of the good dark stuff in it. And there's the final product. 
Cheers, everybody. Oh, that's beautiful. So anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope I've inspired some of you that are in the countries that are legal to do this to go out and give this a go. Invest a little bit of money on the equipment. Um, if it's illegal in your country, sorry about that, but I can't help that. Um, so don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like my video. Um, click the little bell so that you know when my next video is coming up. And thanks for watching. And Happy New Year.